do that this soulful cannabis can kind of take with it. And the big picture is, for many of our industry partners that were on the panel, uh, the, in addition to running the business, that there may be um, a capacity issue with actually making sure that the industry is a better version of itself because people are still trying to make money now, right? Just trying to figure it out. So it could be a good opportunity for Soulful Cannabis to essentially be the conduit, the intermediary for much of what the industry needs to be the better version of itself, right? Around diversity, community, and opportunity. So this will be a good way for um, you know, us to learn about what's, the, what's next, right? And we wanted to shape this whole conversation as an opportunity, right? Not just talking heads, but an opportunity for us to think together. So, um, what's some big ideas that came out of your small conversations with your cousins? Yes, sir. Just in the last couple of weeks, both the House and the Senate in the United States Congress have been holding hearings on the high costs of prescription drugs. But what is needed is a change in the classification of cannabis-based drugs away from Schedule I and the legalization. And that will go far towards changing some of the very discriminatory financial pressures on the industry that took the playing field against their being effectively used banking and effectively to lower the cost. And I think that will be a major transformation that we need to get the word to Congress. Right now, while the hearings are going on regarding the price of drugs, that cannabis drugs can be appropriate and useful and should not be placed in the valley of a tilted playing field. Right. No. Okay. So, so here's some next steps. Uh, we could probably skip at some point, be more specific about how to get to Bob Casey, how to get to some of the other con congressional, both uh, the Senate and House folks. It's worth noting, I invited, we invited all, a lot of the local uh, politicians here. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Leach is the only one who showed up. And he's not in the local area district, but he knew about it and, and came. So we need to get better engagement. Great. So, so you know who your advocates are. He's already on board. You already know who your advocates are. Great. Uh, somebody, give me another big idea. I just want a quick announcement, sorry. <laughs> While you think of your big ideas. Um, <laughs> So if you all could just take a moment to try and fill out the survey, which is on paper out front, and it's also on the app, if any of you did download that, it is on there to make it easier for you. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thanks. Any, uh, Jordan, any big ideas come out of you? Well, I can say, we didn't speak on this, but I can say that something that we've done in Illinois was that a lot of the owners and people actually in charge of the dispensaries get together and they talk about the same issues that we all face, that we see our patients working with, and they work to make sure that things like prices and opportunities are being distributed appropriately. Because a large part of the problem that we were talking about is price, right? And when you talk about it, time is normally going to be what brings that price down, but we can't allow price drop so much that it destroys the market the way it did on the West Coast, right? Uh, so it's a large part of our responsibility as an to speak with one another to make sure that we are at a place that actually benefits the community as well. All right, so industry roundtables to address some of these issues. How about over here, this nice big group of lovely people? Oh, there was some big. So I think we just talked about creating specific initiatives within in educating um, and creating spaces where we can provide more education. Um, I was talking about the education we do. They actually have had several people from 
the envelope come out and do patient education and actually host, help host our infused CBDT party. So creating experiential opportunities to kind of educate people and expand on a knowledge base and create opportunities to get registered. So we create more registered folk who, I don't even really like to say recreational. So we have most recreational people who are just undocumented as opposed to medicinal patients who, you know what I mean, who are, who are self, who are medicated. Um, and then creating programs like uh, corporate social responsibility programs we talked about before that everybody can come together like J J Jordan said and sit down and create you know tangible benchmarks of success things that we can physically do things that we can continually do and then everyone is held to a certain precedent um, whether that be uh, donating to specific causes that we can at the end of the year you know, have 400 registered patients done for free or, or have a 50% off sale for, because we can cover it through the funds that have been done through this charitable opportunity, right? Or create opportunities where we say, oh, we're going to employ a certain amount of veterans, minorities, and LGBT staff by this year. Um, and then holding that standard as an industry emergence, we want more people who are going to be open in the space to, to follow suit with what the best of the best are already doing. So it just makes sense to try to. All right. Uh, you have anything? You have something? Pete has something. I think uh, that the community needs to do a little bit of work in explaining to the government that they should actually have fair and simple laws to allow cannabis-based businesses to advertise. You know, look at the pharmaceutical industry here. Everybody advertises. No matter what you do in life, if you're not advertising, you can't make money. You know, you can have free energy. If you're not telling people about it, no one's going to know you can't sell it. You know, so I'm not asking for anything there, but the community should be able to get the laws amended so the people in the industry can have fair advertising. Well, I'm reading the room, and usually when people are walking towards the doors with their jackets on, that means we probably should stop. So it's a good way to uh, say on behalf of Soulful Cannabis, thank you for this panel. I'm sure Skip and Jason have something to further close. You should all give yourselves a big round of applause for your participation. Thank you, Dr. Caldwell. Thank you to all of our panelists and, and to this great audience. We really enjoyed the day and appreciate everybody's insight and input. Um, as you know, if you sign up for our newsletter, we have some follow-up actions in terms of groups. We're hoping to follow up on, I think, a number of these items put well into what we're hoping to do. In future events with Soulful Cannabis, we're looking at events in Lehigh Valley and possibly in the Harrisburg area. So keep an eye on our site, sign up for our newsletter, we'll be able to keep you abreast of what's going on. Thank you all so much for coming out and making this a successful day. So great job everybody. Keep the conversation going.